Hi, my name is Javier Albernoz. Today, we're going to be looking at how to get a session of probe tools quickly set up so that you can begin to work. So the first thing that you'll see when Pro Tools finishes loading is the dashboard where you can choose to create a new project. So we're gonna name our project, save it locally, and here choose either to be prompted for a location or just click location so you can already set where you would like it to save the session. The important options that we see here are file type, sample rate, bit depth, and your I.O. settings, as well as whether audio files created are interleaved or split mono audio files. So we're going to go with a dot .wav file setting. We're going to use 48 kilohertz sample rate and 24 bits for bit depth. And the I.O. settings, let's leave it to the last used settings. We're going to check interleaved so that when we import or record stereo audio files, we are saving them in our audio files folder and working with them as interleaved in our Pro Tools session. We're gonna click Create. So you have an empty session. There's your timeline. And the first thing that we're gonna to wanna to do is to create tracks. So under the drop down menu for track, we click New and we have our new tracks dialog box. So here we're going to click the plus sign on the right side so that we don't have to keep coming back to add tracks. We can actually just add several at once. So the first thing I'm going to do is choose that I want a stereo master fader. It's very important so that you can hear your audio output of all your other tracks you create. So Let's just, for the sake of example, create two mono audio tracks, and we're going to name them audio mono, and it will increment them since we're creating two. We're going to create one stereo audio track, and we'll name that audio ST for stereo, and then we'll create a stereo instrument track as well, and it'll name it inst. Now you can of course customize this and you can change it later once it's in your session. We're going to click create and you can see that both in our edit window and in our mix window we've created all the tracks we chose in the order that we chose in that dialog box. But of course you can click and you can actually rearrange how you would like to view these. We can drag our master fader down to the bottom and now I think it makes a little more sense visually as your audio does flow left to right into this audio master channel. So the next thing that you might want to do is import some audio to work with. So if we click here, file, and we go to our import drop down tab, we do see the audio window here and we can choose files to import. So let's import some audio. We've got a WAV file here. It's showing us the name of the WAV file, the properties of that file, its type, its length, file size, how many channels, as well as sample, write, sample rate and bit depth. Now we are gonna choose whether we want to add or copy. This is an important distinction. If we add, this file will be referenced from this location here. If we choose to copy, which is what I'll choose now, uh, Pro Tools will make a copy of this audio file inside the folder you choose, which is usually the audio files folder within your session folder. Uh, the other thing that will happen is if this file were not a matching sample rate or bit depth that matches this session, then it will go ahead and convert the file while copying it so that it plays back correctly. If you choose add and this sample rate were say at 44,100 and bit depth at 16 bit, then simply adding it would incorrectly import it as a 
different sample rate and bit depth than our session and you will not have correct playback of the audio file. So it's another reason why copying is usually the safe way to go. When I click done, it is asking where this destination folder would be. And by default, it is that audio files folder within your Pro Tools session folder. When I click open, the processing that happens was the copying and possible converting of the file. We're going to have whether we choose to import it to a new track or our clip list. And if we choose new track, it does give us the option of where in the session. I'm going to choose clip list because I already have some tracks added. Click OK. And you can see here on the right is our clip list where we do see our audio file. Now I can grab that file and I can drag it in here and it is a stereo file. So when I place it over my stereo audio track, you see it falls right in as an interleaved stereo file. If I were to drop it over our two mono tracks, it will split left and right and drop it in there as two split mono files. So I'm going to drop it in right there. And now we have our first piece of audio. Now, right now, our audio master is set to an output that we do have set as our output path in our IO settings. So every audio track here needs to also be set to that, which it does set by default so that you are hearing audio. So let's play back and see if we're hearing our audio. We'll advance a bit. Fuck B, this is the reanimation step. Great, so we have proper routing. If for some reason you were not hearing audio, that's where you'd want to go. Check out these paths. In your mix window, they live here, and in your edit window here, and it's the same exact drop down tab and options. If you needed to troubleshoot your I.O. settings, if you go to setup, you'll see the I.O. dialog box where you can choose, for example, here in the output tab, you can choose your monitor path, which when selected here, it will place this speaker icon next to that hardware output on your audio interface. So right now it's correctly routed and that is why we are hearing that audio. Now next, if you did want to import, for example, a video track to go along with this session, we would click File, Import, and we choose Video. Now, we want to find a video file, so we will go and search our folders here until we get to a video file, and there we go. Now we have an MP4 or MOV file so that we can import. Video import options are merely where in the session it will drop the video file and if you want the audio that might be a part of that video to be imported as well. You are going to get the option uh, when you click import audio file to choose where that audio goes and again we can just choose our audio files folder in our Pro Tools session folder. Now it did add a new track for both the video and audio and I will select them and move them up here to the top. Let's mute this track here that we previously imported. So now we can see the playback of our video and hear the audio we just imported. All right, here's Don Quixote. Great, so now we're ready to start working with video and audio in our session. Now we did also load an instrument track, so if you wanted to load a VST plugin as an instrument, you would go to your inserts here and you have your choice of instruments depending on what you have loaded in your computer. So now you know how to create a new session, add new tracks, and get started in Pro Tools.